I decided to join this program because I got an email and I was like, this seems very interesting, all that they were saying. I didn't know who Paul Robeson was and like everything, I always forward the emails that I get from Rutgers and just important emails to my parents. And he might have known who it was and he was like, this is a really great program, like you should really look into this and do it. So. Here I am. I joined the Paul Robeson Leadership Institute for a multitude of things. At first it was the email that got me interested, and then things like the personal touch of Miss Lachelle, one of the advisors of this program, calling me and talking to me about the program. Me looking into different opportunities that the program would provide, different classes that I never thought I would take in my college career. It was more of my parents who made me join it, um, but it definitely was the right move by them. I really feel like I've learned so much that can't be offered anywhere else. My only worry was that the program was going to be very intense and extremely difficult that I would not be able to like keep up because I actually had heard from, I was able to make a few connections with people who were Paul Robeson Leadership Institute scholars from last year and they said that it was hard, like it was rough. But it was intense, it was intense for the first few days, but it ended up dwindling down and it was still very educational. I originally thought it was gonna be like a little bit of work, and, you know, we was gonna sit around, you know, talk some time, talk about leadership and talk about Paul Robeson, but it, the workload was much greater than I expected it to be, but um, it was worth it, like it seems worth it, like I seem more prepared than what I did before, so I'm happy about that. I've learned a lot, a lot of not just social aspects of being a new student at Rutgers, but how to navigate the campus, how to interact with other people, how to interact with professors and people of higher power and um, in a more formal setting as well as um, informal setting. And I've also learned a lot about myself and what I could do in um, academically as well as socially. I feel like me being in this program has given me access to almost everybody I can meet at Rutgers more than regular students. I actually really loved it, to be honest. I was a little hesitant the first couple of days because everybody was so quiet into themselves. But after that, everybody got so close. And I really met some people that I really feel like we're going to be lifelong friends. And I'm going to see a lot on campus. I love the friendships that I made. I feel like in this giant class of like 7,000 incoming freshmen, you can feel really isolated. And I have found a community with 39 other kids that are like me. We share a lot of similar backgrounds and I did not get that in high school. And coming to college, I didn't expect, expect it to happen here either. But this institute really just made me feel like it's okay to be who I am in a world that tells me it's not. I, I'm so glad that I did this because I grew up in a mainly like very white, wealthy town and for the first time in my entire life, I've never felt like the other. I have felt completely myself. I've felt completely accepted here. And you're going to see that. And you're going to be able to grow from it. And it's one of the most rewarding things that I've possibly ever done. Being able to be in a classroom setting where there's people that look like me, share similar beliefs as me, talk like me, act like me, it's been really rewarding to be able to you know, connect with them and be able to network and branch out and have these relationships formed. So honoring Paul Robeson's legacy to me is very important because he's not honored enough. He's not remembered enough. He's not embraced for all the things that he's done, like working for civil rights, not only in America, but throughout the world, going to different countries, doing the thing, standing up for the, for the rights of people that didn't have a voice to stand up and doing the hard things, like going against your whole entire country and being shunned for the work that you do. He was hated for it. And I think America should know what he did because he seriously, did some dangerous moves in the eyes of many white Americans. And to be able to stand up for what he believed in, in a time as dangerous as the 1900s, is some serious respect. Him just being an all-American and then the valedictorian of his class, I know that I could try to follow his legacy more in the athletic way, but because of his great scholar, I feel like I could try my best to do that as well. And I achieve I want to achieve a 4.0, and <laughs> I don't know about valedictorian, but definitely All-American in athletics and just being a well-rounded well person and then just 
being an activist as well. He said, especially for first generation and especially minority students that are in the program, specifically like black and Latino students, he, he was a trailblazer. He was like an everyman. He was an actor, a singer, an academic, an activist. And he created those spaces and he was able to like break barriers that allow us and that's allowing me to be sitting here right now. That's allowing like us as a group and the people in this program to be able to have this and to have this opportunity. And to celebrate him is important because we need to spread that message of acceptance, inclusion, not just here at Rutgers, but everywhere. My future goals, multiple, are to cure cancer, run my own research lab, and, you know, maybe side projects like Lyme disease or Alzheimer's, whatever I come to. Um, but I feel like this institute connects to that way because Paul Robeson had huge, giant, grand goals that a lot of people told him he couldn't accomplish. And when you hear someone say they're gonna cure cancer, you're like, good luck. But I, I'm gonna cure cancer. And I believe that, and that's just how it is.